What I've been trying to do is set up Unreal Engine to do my retargeting using the IK, the full body IK that's there now, the IK retargeting method. Uh, because I want to try and drop Motion Builder from the pipeline. Motion Builder is a complex piece to put in between things, and it's another step. Uh, and I, I think it would be great to reduce the number of steps and the number of things. Down here at the end, I've got a computer running Motive, and we've got a walk cycle from a performer named Kia Jewel. Now, normally, I would come onto this computer and run Motion Builder using you know, the, the workflow where you drag in an OptiTrax skeleton uh, device, uh, which is a plugin that they provide, OptiTrax provides. You go online and you create a model binding. And what this does is it builds a skeleton from the stream at the size that it is in Motive. This is the size that it's been snapped uh, to our performer. So it's, it's the right size. And it shows up here in the right size. Now, when you use the Live Link plugin here in Unreal Engine, it doesn't show up at the right size. That's what I'm going to show now. Now, in Motion Builder, it builds a skeleton, and you can retarget right from a skeleton. But in Unreal Engine, you need a skeletal mesh to stream onto. And then from this, I'm going to stream onto, retarget onto my target skeleton. Now, one way you can find a skeleton is here in my basic project. I've got the plugin for the OptiTrax downloaded from OptiTrax people. Inside of the Live Link folder is a content folder, and inside of here is a skeleton with some instructions on how to import it. I'm going to bring it in here, and the instructions say make sure you don't have a skeleton defined and use these uh, options. Uh, so I've brought that in here. And just like you might expect, it's a simple skeleton with the OptiTrax bone names here. It doesn't have any hands, but that's not relevant for this test. Uh, and this is what we're going to stream onto. Now, I'm going to show you the two ways that you can do this with OptiTrax. There's the old way and the new way. The old way, you create an animation blueprint like this. Pick your skeleton, and you make sure it's subclassed from the OptiTrax anim instance, like that. Old way, we'll call this one. If you've subclassed it from there, you can then get an OptiTrack skeleton. And you can get a, um, what is this? This is a get asset name. This is functions that provided by, by this plugin. And you can get client origin. Now, we didn't set up a client origin yet. I'll do that in a moment. This object, you need to get bone mappings for. So autofill works because it knows the names of these joints that are coming across from the stream. So that will just work. Uh, and I think that's it for this. Compile and save. You get a warning that it only runs in editor. We can make a client origin from here. All classes. Scroll down to the O's. OptiTrack client origin. Make one of those. And I give it zeros at the origin. We'll put this into the scene, and I'll also give it or zeros. And this needs one more thing in order to get moving. It would be an OptiTrack skeleton component, one of these. And this is where you define your performer, which I know to be, I know to be that. So now when I hit play, I should see it moving. And that's great. And there's also on here a debug option, which is useful. It's on the client origin that shows your skeletons. So I'm going to show those skeletons and play again. And here you'll see the skeleton overlaid on my geometry. And they're one-to-one -one matching, the right scale. This is exactly what I want to stream off of. However. For virtual production, using this play and editor method uh, is not viable. It's just, it's just too hard. 
So I'll show you the live link way, which can work in editor. The live link way, you need a live link source. So we go OptiTrex, create, and then we get our stream and our source, which is great. Similarly, you need an animation blueprint from the same skeleton. This could be the standard. You don't need any special classes. And here we just need a live link pose. We name our subject and we set the retargeting asset to be the OptiTrex live link retarget that they've provided. So they provide this with the plugin. When you hit compile, you see the walking. So we'll save, close, and we'll put one of these in the scene. But we'll give it some different colors. We'll make this one uh, blue. So we'll find a blue material that already exists somewhere. There we go. Uh, and we also need a live link skeletal animation component so that we could see it playing in editor. So if I go to my outliner, and I make sure this is also zeros. When I hit the play button, I should see these skeletons overlaid. And what you see is that it's not scaling in the same way that the yellow one is scaling. And I'm going to hide the yellow one for a moment. And let's just look at this and see what the issue is. When it doesn't scale, you can see that the steps don't really plant very well. It's kind of squishy, the feet slide, and that's an issue. It, it means our quality motion here is not, it's not keeping its quality when it gets into the engine. Now, looking at this BP again, this retargeting thing, it would be great to inspect this because when we look at the other BP, this has an option to scale the bones. So I'm wondering, oh, is there an option to scale the bones here in this retargeter? Uh, but I can't see it because it doesn't, uh, it's, it's just in, in code, I think. It's not a blueprint. But there is actually a blueprint in here. Make a blueprint. And if we look for the OptiTrex, we can see there is a OptiTrex live link retarget blueprint I can make. This is more like a remapper than a retargeter. If we double click this, we can see we get this bone mapping. There's no automatic button, but thankfully it's filled out with the defaults. But down here is a scale bones option. Oh, this seems great. This is just what I want. Compile, save, go back to my live link way and point at mine that I just made. And what you'll see is it doesn't work as expected. You can see it here in this viewport, and you can also see it here in this viewport. The scaling partly works, but doesn't fully work. I'll turn this on. So there's an issue in the code there about how the scaling is happening. So that's what I would love to uh, figure out how to fix. Uh, there's a workaround that I've figured out. It's not, it's not great, but it looks like this. Over there in Motive, I write out an FBX for my performer. It's just got a, it just needs a short piece of motion, could be any motion. I write that FBX and I bring it into Maya like this. I came up with this workaround, not for this live streaming scenario, but to use the data that I've recorded there. This is the same method that I'm using to retarget um, FBX data that I've written out of Motive. Uh, so here's that same motion that we were just looking at, written out as an FBX. I go to any frame, uh, zero you know, is handy, and then I have this script that's going to take the namespace away, zero out all the joint rotations on all the joints, uh, and move the hips over to the origin, and then add some geometry so we get something similar to uh, what we saw with the yellow skeleton. So that's, that's what this whole script does. And out of that, we get this skeleton that we can bring into the engine. So I write this out 
all these uh, geometries that you see here are just parented into the skeleton. So you have to bring it into Unreal Engine with the, uh, I've written this out here. So that's the motion without any mesh. And this is the mesh that I just wrote out from Maya. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's a skeletal mesh. Uh, I don't need a physics asset. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, I'll use this because I don't know that it's got a bind pose. And we, this is important. Import meshes in bone hierarchy because all these meshes are just parented to the joints. Uh, and I don't want any animation because uh, I didn't save any animation in there. So now I have another skeleton. This one's pink, has fingers, and the names are the, the, the names from OptiTrex. So now if I make an anim BP of this one, Uh, and that skeleton is called SKM Kia. I make a live link. Pick Kia over here. We can pick that, compile, and save. And it should be moving. Uh, it's not moving because I'm not sure why, but that Opti one doesn't work. And I go back to the regular Live Link one, and that one works for some reason. Uh, we're going to save. And now if I close this and I put this in the scene with zeros, and I give this a live link component, I see this moving and it's scaled appropriately. And if I hit play, I see what I hope to see, which is my skeletal mesh uh, matching the stream data. Now this I can retarget from, and that's how I would do it on a live day, or that's how I would also do it on a um, you know FBX way. If I write out a bunch of FBXs from uh, Motive at the end, and I have one per performer, I can bring them all into the engine and retarget them onto anything. Once I set up the IK retargeter, so that's the uh, that's it for this video. Uh, I'm gonna go have lunch. I'll make another video soon. Bye.